to Alien Theorist Theorizing Case File 286. The gr- the Great Britain <laughs> UFO Invasion. The Great B- British? What did we say? Britain. I instantly forgot. Great, Great Britain. Great Britain UFO yeah. Invasion. Uh, we come up with these titles literally right before. So that's just so you know, a little peek behind the curtain. And you mess it's up every time. Yeah. yeah. Right before I hit go live, I we just decided. <laughs> Yeah, I, I have like re- what's reverse goldfish memory? Like I don't remember anything that just happened. It takes my brain like uh, you have a slow minutes to, <laughs> you have to yeah, process to it. Yeah, it's got to render, right? <laughs> the, the memory's got to render when I sleep. So, so you're in a con- you're in, there, in a constant state of not knowing what's going on. <laughs> yeah, I'm in a saying. constant bu- constant blackout <laughs> through the day. <laughs> you're right? just and you're just I, now cluing in to what we talked about 5 minutes ago. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, oh, yeah, the title. Okay, yeah, the Great British UFO Invasion. All right, I remember that now. <laughs> um, interesting topic today. Kind of a funny one, actually. Elaborate. It is comical. pretty. I mean, it is pretty interesting that it's like this is a. <laughs> um, if people don't know, yeah, this is the great. We called it the Great British or Great sorry, Great Britain saucer invasion of 1967, where a small group of well, number of six that we know of flying saucers that I mean, that's a flap, a whole flap all at once. Yeah, it's a whole flap. I, you know, I, a time. Well, I know the flap is like over a couple over. of days. It's like yeah, but if a well, yeah. oh, yeah. so one one night flap, one flap, one flap, one night flap, yeah. one flap, <laughs> half flap, more like a flop. <laughs> uh, Eat more tarts. <laughs> but there was a group, and <laughs> yeah, so hold on, I to just interject there because you're gonna fucking shoot. It's your diet. I'm on it. Sick as fuck. All right. Started with the twelve tarts. Right. I didn't say anything. Did, did I say anything about tarts? Well, I read online. No. A lot of people recommended if you're doing an it's intro, a, a bridge into the. They're like, "Hey, listen, just going, just going right into the Zell's Danish diet can be dangerous for your health. So a lot of times you want to bridge it, right? So it's like day one, twelve tarts. But if you're talking to fucking, you're, if you're talking to fucking Atkins about the Atkins diet, you go with what he tells you. If you're talking to Mister fucking Danisher. Why do you got to go online <laughs> to talk to other people? You, like you, you went down the wrong hole. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, uh, and, I, and if you I, don't don't know about the Danish uh, the Danish diet, you gotta listen to After Hours of Last Case File. Yeah, I believe that's um, where it was brought up. Was it? Yeah, maybe I'll post a clip of just that so people because I'm on it. I've already lost pure God, sugar by the, time, the you're, pure carb, by time you're listening to this. Pure Danish carb, 12, sugar, 12 and mold. Those are the three ingredients. Yeah. That's only to touch your body. I was 250 so. pounds. I'm 240 pounds now, thanks to the Zell's Danish diet. You're welcome. Right. So, You'd be two thirty if you fall, if it went Dan- yeah. Danishes and not tarts. Yeah, the the comedy is about to go down. The sexiness about to go way up. So, <laughs> prepare yourselves. Uh, so uh, September fourth, nineteen sixty seven, six flying saucers landed across Great Britain, causing a bit of a hubbub that morning. Um, now, to settle it, I guess to kind of set the scene for that at that time, uh, Great Britain was kind of already into its kind of UFO fever, uh, you know, which Bloody, is and they bit. still have PTSD from fucking World War II, <laughs> um, right? Like there, right. anything in the air that they don't know is fucking shoot it down. People are blacking out in the streets. <laughs> yeah, we're. I mean, we're into. We're definitely into. You know, Cold War is in full effect. Uh, pretty much at this point. Um, but uh, Britain has already had its exposure uh, to UFOs and the UFO phenomenon since we, uh, we already talked about previously. Like just almost like you know a decade before, like the the. Uh, leading up to this event, you had, you know, Operation Main Brace, where we had two, three, four, multiple uh, UFO sightings that were documented and investigated. Um, like October 9th, 1953, you had two British European Airlines pilots who were flying from London to Paris. Like they said that they had saw some type of saucer shaped object. Um, never figured out what that was. Uh, 22nd of September, 1956, um, you had some type of large spherical glass like uh, object that was like 80 feet and it reported to be 80 feet in diameter was apparently seen over Cleethorpe's coast, uh, which is also it appeared like at least for an hour on radar instruments that were tracking it. 
and then even in like just like you know 1957 um milton torres who is uh, had a, a ufo encounter um which was he was flying a usaf uh f86d saber um that was based out of raf manston and actually intercepted an object over east anglia or reported to um ufos are, are in the zeitgeist now yeah, they're already oh, there. Yeah. They're all they're, over the place. I mean, we've had Roswell, right? She, even though there's no internet, it's like it's gone global. Like it's a it's the global phenomenon. It's in the paper everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Um, science fiction is also in is also very popular at this time. Like even in British pop culture, just there. Like you already had Doctor Who, uh, which started airing in 1963. Um, really? Yeah. The OG oh, shit. Yeah. The OG doctor who started in 1963 and going through there and not to mention like, you know, the tons of, I mean, science fiction in 1950s and sixties is great stuff. Um, and you had, you know, serials, you had, you know, radio serials, you had, uh, TV, uh, books, magazines, pulp comics, all like that kind of stuff. So it's all like, there's a lot of stuff that's kind of leans into this. So everything like UFO was like, everything's primed to kind of be like, okay, like bring on the flying saucers. Let's go. Let's get ready. <laughs> um, but on that morning of September 4th, 1967, um, you had, you had these six very similar looking saucer shape and, but also po- reportedly more egg shaped than saucer egg saucer shaped objects, which appeared in multiple locations across uh, Great Britain, which, and apparently they lined up almost perfectly along the 51st parallel Ley uh, line. in Southern yeah. England. Oh, shit. Of course. Like power grid. Right. Yeah. The, the power went out on that line. <laughs> right. It all came crashing. Dropped, down. dropped them out of the sky. Right. Um, so you had police were police or swamped with phone calls that morning, uh, from the public reporting the discovery of these small egg saucers, um, that had just like cropped up overnight. Like they weren't there they weren't there in the evening and now they had appeared in various locations all over. And that'd be such a fucking weird thing too. Cause in the first, like, I'm sure in this time much like now too like someone someone calls like like the police they're like i see you in a flying saucer they're like okay yeah all right yeah all right cool and then they like hang up they're like all right yeah i just got a call about flying saucer and the phone's like ringing again they're like oh another one where oh we just got a call about different one okay you're like, all right. And then they just keep piling in. You're like, holy shit. All right. Something's going on. You're like, it's almost to the point where it's like, you can't even, you would have to take it seriously at this point because you're, you're getting flooded with calls from all over. So it's not like you can just like be like, eh, what's I'm sh- one crazy guy. Probably nothing. Right. We're not going to do well, I mean, they obviously that. didn't take it super seriously. They didn't yeah, fucking call some it. They didn't, well, they would have called up her buddy at 221B Baker Street. He would have solved this shit. Fucking look at his split. Yeah. <laughs> like, come on. Uh, yeah, the discovery of each object is actually pretty interesting. The different types of reactions that were garnered from like the people who discovered them, like they kind of. This would be the worst Sherlock episode, but yeah. also one I would a hundred percent want to see. Indubitably. Fully made. Fully made. Six egg shaped craft. Yeah. Not dear Watson. You know he'd be slinking around like. Hmm. hmm. Wouldn't sit tell anyone till the end of the episode. <laughs> yeah, well, of course, my dear Watson, it's made of paper mache. As I as I first notice as I approach the craft, he, he would taste it for sure. Yeah, one hundred percent has to. <laughs> What's that smell? Uh, then he'd play aggressive violin and shoot a gun <laughs> at a wall for no reason. <laughs> uh, you had probably one of the. Um, one of the, the one that made the biggest splash apparently was like the first one that kind of got reported. And this one was actually in the located on the Isle of Sheppey in the Thames estuary uh, near a new housing development when that was being built at the time. So um, you know what I forgot to look up that I was going to look up. Do we know the distance? Cause these were from everything I read and stuff. These were quite a distance away. It's not like they were like one was a block over. Well, they were, they apparently like started like from, I said, uh, all across Southern England from Sheppey to the Bristol Channel. Like it was like all the way across, like the Southern, like I guess driving across Southern England, like you would have that all the way, 
between the first one and the sixth one that was found. Um, but uh, people first noticed that something was going on, like in the very, very early morning of September 4th. So about like 2.30 a.m., there was a report of like this strange wailing sound, uh, which led people to discover this object, that it was making a type of this type of high pitched mm-hmm. noise uh, that it seemed to be emanating from, like whether and nobody really knew what it was. And that that is what kind of. <laughs> warranted the people to kind of call the police and be like, what is this thing that's sitting here and making a lot of noise? And we don't know exactly what it is. It doesn't look like anything, you know, that we recognize. Um, well, we should change the name of this and make it totally like fucking Sherlock Holmes. We should make it like the fucking howling, the howling saucers of Bristol channel or some shit. Yeah. <laughs> right? like, yeah. We're changing that. Yeah. So I'll plug that in. Right. The like howling saucers cool of like Bristol channel. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I like it. Yeah. That's great. Uh, and there was another, there, like, there apparently, like, this wasn't the only thing that had unusual event that had happened this night that preceding the discovery of this one, uh, the, the first flying saucer, apparently there was a uh, reported by a woman named Cynthia tooth that there, there had been a strange noise coming from the night sky, which actually ended up like waking her up from sleep. And when she went to her bedroom window to kind of look at what was going on, there were apparently a, a straight, she saw a strange light that went down behind some trees in the area of where this, uh, th- this craft or this object had been found. So, Okay. Um, <laughs> um there is a, a second one was actually discovered on the the bromley golf course uh which was actually discovered by a caddy uh, named harry huxley who was out there i guess doing his morning uh you know the morning ball retrieval uh as he would i guess and so he's just like searching for lost balls and the the, the, the great thing about this is apparently it didn't really concern Huxley all that much because he kept searching like he, I, yeah, he just kept going about his day. Like he saw this thing. I would completely understand that if this was a mini golf course, because you would expect to see stupid shit like that. on a mini golf course. Sure. I mean, <laughs> yeah. one, but, oh, yeah, it's just a new weird, right? obstacle, I guess. Yeah, like, 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 like <laughs> that's the new par three. Like, <laughs> like, uh, um, but this one, I just uh, be bothered. Yeah, like, no. Doesn't get paid enough for this shit. He he's the perfect. He's honestly this this would play out as a great Sherlock episode because he's like the quirk guy. Like he didn't care at all. He's like, no, look for my ball. Why yeah. would I? <laughs> exactly. I'd be like, yeah, I don't get paid enough for this shit. Like, I mean, like if I'm out Mark there shagging words. balls in the fucking morning, Mark like, my words. Uh, no, something's up you. with this guy. Let, no, listen, because if he does find it, who do you think they're gonna make fucking get rid of it? Hey, there's a game right? afoot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah so he didn't even report like his his sighting of an object like until like later in the afternoon when somebody kind of like just somebody else had seen it and he just seemed to re- it was like oh yeah yeah i saw that thing earlier this morning and it's like wait what like why didn't you tell anybody well i just forgot i was out there uh <laughs> he's probably like did you see the alien craft in the <laughs> park and he's like Alien craft in the party. He's like, yeah, that's like something. He's like, shit, I saw that's what it is. Oh, what? <laughs> it was a kite. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I guess, um, I guess there was a police officer named Gordon Hampton who was actually on his like uh, morning patrol around that lane. Uh, and he had actually. Um, you mean Flash? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Flash to his friends and colleagues. Flash Hampton? Flash Hampton. That's great. Right? Like, yeah. That's a great name. Yeah. That's, that's a fucking ball. Good. Flash Thompson is better, but yeah. Yeah. Flash Hampton's pretty good. Yeah, it's like pretty the good. English version. Probably walks around everywhere in like a fucking Letterman jacket. Yeah. <laughs> um, so as uh, like Huxley actually ran into Gore, uh, Flash Hampton while he was doing his uh, doing his rounds, and he told Flash him about Hampton. this egg uh, that he had found, this silver egg object that had been found on the golf course that <clears> wasn't there uh yesterday and so uh apparently as hampton went to go investigate the uh the craft this one started making a a piercing whale sound as well wow. coming from this object as he got near it so he radioed into the station you know uh you know being nonplussed about what he was seeing like he don't he doesn't know and he was actually like from the beginning he suspected that this thing was extraterrestrial that this thing was not from these parts um but 
being the kind of being aware of you know conscientiously. I, get, I, I mean, what I get going to be if you like just for the listener. Like, if you were to look at these things, they are very like you would have. It would be hard to look at that and go like it's it's just not it's a saucer. That's what it is. It's a saucer. It looks exactly stereotypical. It doesn't really look like an egg to me. I don't know why everybody keeps saying it looks like an egg. It looks, like a, it looks like a fat saucer. Like, yeah, it looks like a fat saucer, right? Well, it looks like, like a, a saucer bunch. that's been on the Danish diet. It's like the Great Gazoo's like, yeah. fucking saucer. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, it's, it's, like a, it's got like a rounded ball and it's flat. To be honest, up. if it but looks like, like enough like an egg, one of these fucking British fuckers would take that thing, light it on fire with themselves, and try to go all Khaleesi and have a dragon egg. We know of it. It's, <laughs> the other it thing is like... Sure. Oh. <laughs> What? What? <laughs> no, it's like maybe if it was recent, because yeah. Game of Thrones. I don't know when that came out. There's, I'm sure there was something equivalent back then. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Lord of the Ring. Lord of the, the Rings was out. There you go. I think. <laughs> um, probably. The the other thing, because I was like, when I was reading this, I was like, well, what? Like, did they not think it was a bomb? Like, that's kind of where my when you're reading it. But when you look at the pictures. Like when you look at the pictures of these things, you're like, okay, I get how the immediate reaction was extraterrestrial, not like this could be some sort of <clears throat> bomb device. When were when were bombs a real thing? I guess they were for like, a long like, time before that. Yeah. 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 Like, this is post World War II. They, yeah. they, they, they we got, well we made bombs. the biggest bombs in <laughs> yeah. World War II. I mean, yeah, yeah. bombs have been around oh, for yeah. a while. I guess I forgot about those ones. Uh, <laughs> I'm still my brain hasn't switched over from the, the Danish diet. It's because you're 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 knackered. Yeah. <laughs> right knackered. You're fucking right knackered. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, it wouldn't. It doesn't resemble anything that you would possibly uh, categorize like in the like a structure structured as a bomb or some type of explosive device. Because if you're looking at it, you're like, there's no wires on it. There's no like controls, lights, indicators, gauges, nothing. There's nothing on there. It's just this smooth it like silver. There's a it, it is bomb. screaming at you. Yeah, it's scream, it's scream All it's missing down. for me, it's missing a fucking clock on it. I would have been like, fucking, we got a bomb for sure. <laughs> oh, tick, yeah. Pop quiz, uh, hot shot. Get the fuck out of there, man. Uh, so Hampton, conscious of how it would be received if he used the words UFO or spaceship uh, over the airwaves on the uh, the police band, because uh, if, if people don't or aren't aware that, like back then, uh, police police um, police bands weren't encrypted yet. <clears throat> So you could have just you could have like any amateur ham radio operator just picking up and listening to what <laughs> they you're were broadcasting on ninety nine point nine police <laughs> FM basically. <laughs> uh, but uh, apparently, eventually, like Hampton, I like I can imagine the conversation. He's like, I've got something out here at the golf course, and they're like, What? What is it? He's like, Well, it's a thing. You're like, Yeah, but what? Some, some like, what dodgy exactly silver is it? fucking thing hanging on. And he's like, course. Well, you guys need to come out here and look at. It. Like, why do we need to come out there and look at it? Like, what is it? And it's like, Ah, it's like eventually just like that goes on for ten minutes, and he's like, It's a fucking spaceship. Like, Jesus. <laughs> and they're like, Oh, yeah, okay, I want to see that. And then they all kind of rush out there, uh, apparently. <laughs> so, um, uh, like the, 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 uh, there was apparently like a number of officers that were dispatched from the Bromley station to go and see, um, you know, they still weren't actually sure that Hampton was telling the truth and they were more sent out there to, um, to assess whether he was drunk or not on the job. Oh, they thought, they, yeah, they thought there were some hijinks for sure going on. They're like, oh, this is some sort of prank. Is he pull, yeah, was he hitting, like, couple, taking a couple nips this morning, like, before, you know, his little Irish coffee or whatever, but, like, it seemed what was going on. Um, but as they got there and they saw what this object was, the the local police made the decision to go ahead and take the this – saucer uh back to <laughs> back to the station and which is like eh, not such a great idea like it's if you can just, imagine like, just take <laughs> load up the saucer drive it through town you don't know what's on this thing is this thing fucking contaminated is it radioactive what is the fuck it, is it a bomb is it a is bomb, it a bomb? Yeah, like that's <laughs> just throw, terry throw it on the flat point. deck just chuck it on the flat deck drive it through town everyone can see it they got the local tow truck guy. He just threw a fucking chain around it to drag it onto the flat deck. Uh, the, fun, the crazy thing, because this was like they know it, it weighed like a hundred pounds, over a hundred pounds. 
Yeah, about that. Yeah. So it was like big enough that like probably a couple guys had to put their hands. So they're putting their hands on this thing. They're like, "All right, on. What is this? Look at this thing." Just chucking it in the back of the pickup and just being like, "Yeah, okay, let's go." It's just um, a fucking one of those demon cores. They're all melting. <laughs> and when, um, when you know, the, more than like the federal tour, like authorities uh, got involved, like they they actually had a senior Scotland Yard officer that would turn up later, and then uh, like he gave them serious reprimand like what the what the hell are you guys thinking like why would you bring this into like the populated town heavily populated town when you don't know what this thing is you have no idea you just picked it up put it in the truck and took it out there it could be a fucking (laughs) this could be anything like if whether or not it's like just an extraterrestrial craft it could be some kind of explosive device biological anything (laughs) they would have no idea about the biological element really then like i don't think that would have been at the forefront of their concern as it would be now like then they're like <laughs> they're probably fucking licking it, <laughs> kissing it, <laughs> like it's some some sort of fucking Blarney stone. Yeah, I they're mean they're probably. They're I mean it's like a head. giant egg, so they like got their ears on it. They're like tapping it, you know, like it, it you know, it's like yeah. oh, I think it moved, like you know. It's like, it, I'm it, telling it, you, this is a fucking Sherlock. <laughs> like you, yeah. you got Lestrade fucking clicking on it, listening to it, moving around, and then Sherlock rolls up and was like, "What the fuck are you guys doing?" It's more like <laughs> Scooby Doo at this point, I think. <laughs> 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 is there a British uh, Scooby Doo though? It's a good, good question. I'm sure there's something he, similar. I, I'm sure he's Scooby a great Doo's, Dane. He's gone across the pond for sure. Oh yeah, Scooby Doo, right? Had to for sure. He's, he's met the Beatles. The yeah. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, yeah sure. or yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or the monkeys. Um, Maybe it's the monkeys. Uh, once didn't they have a cartoon show? I can't remember the monkeys. Yeah. And they, they have a, t- a TV show, they have a cartoon show. Um, so once they had the UFO back at the station, uh, the the officer in charge of the operation, a superintendent Shepherd, actually phoned Scotland Yard and called what the what it apparently is like the um, they got a hold of what is called like the back hall inspector, uh, which kind of like does this kind of weird like they deal with the kind of weird stuff i guess like that's the x files basically yeah. <laughs> that's if, that could be their show the the back hall yeah which that would be a that would be a cool show name actually yeah, yeah. A, uh trademark trademark we trademark that yeah we called yeah. it yeah. netflix <laughs> netflix um our yeah, british but- x-files black hole yeah, it's like this the the sole job of this this officer who has this designation is to pretty much like field all the weird requests that come from all of the nation's police forces and then go ahead and then kind of be the go between and contact the relevant agencies in the government within the government that would go ahead and deal with these kinds of things. Uh or deal you know, he makes the decision of like I'm going to contact them and be like you know, is this your guys' job or what? Like <laughs> trying to figure out who, who would take care of this just exactly. Yeah, uh, in our show it's just one guy <laughs> who like didn't really want to be there. <laughs> and he gets saddled with these mysteries. I um like it. So, you know, as it, as it goes on, you know, the, the back hall inspector uh, ends up just uh, sent, like the report ends up on the desk at the ministry, ministry of defense just after 9am. So a pretty, a rather pr- prompt response. It's just pretty like quick seven turnaround. hours, yep. pretty much like seven hours after this, these things have appeared, like the ministry of defense is already on alert and dispatching uh, investigators. Um, helicopters. They, they think it's the Russian, the Russians right. coming in. So new experimental it, aircraft are they loaded with? New, are these war, weapons they just dropped in? You would think this is like start of the Cold War, ramping up. Uh, and pretty well, much, sure, yeah. your imagination would have been going anything. Like imagine the intel and stuff they were looking at back then too. They're like, this is it, happening. Like this is the this is years. a space race too, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Like, like you're already getting, getting ready. Like because what? Sure. Sixty-seven. Two two more years, and the you know the Russians already been to be orbit. Sputnik yeah. and all that. Yeah. Yeah. Apollo really program like all by all accounts. <laughs> Allegedly, of course. Uh, so uh, by 9 a.m., like all of Southern England was pretty much waking up to reports that the country was under attack by either <laughs> extraterrestrials <laughs> or some type of Soviet incursion of what was going on some kind of secret soviet uh operation was kind of going on so like the newspapers and radio news uh, like i'd already gotten a hold of the information that was being floated around uh, i guess about what was going I, on i kind of thought this was at first like actually like until you we 
just talked about you said it now i was thinking that i was like this seemed like overkill that they were broadcasting that like we're under attack and this it's it, all this stuff and then i was like now that i'm thinking about it, i'm like no man this is a place that was like suffered one of the is it's probably the greatest aerial assault of all time and it's like they well, had a duty to japan but well I, yeah but i mean this was it was constant in yeah Britain, constant right constant yeah whereas yeah, they, they in, only needed two they needed two two, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> two quick yeah. ones hurt, yeah uh so they had like probably like a duty to be like maybe crank the sirens a couple times <laughs> dust them off <laughs> uh, uh so once those reports kind of came out those first two were like the first ones found there a number of other the other several were then starting to trickle in reports of them so apparently in cleaved in somerset a paper boy actually found uh another one of the saucers uh located on uh dial hill and apparently like he told like he t- told somebody like as he came in like his manager or whatever and he laughed at him like he's like i <laughs> couldn't even get him to take him seriously um you had a uh you had a farm <laughs> Jonah jameson just yelling at him <laughs> um on a f- <laughs> I mean, pictures of Spider-Man. Don't give me that saucer bullshit. Like, yeah. <laughs> um, at a farm in well, <laughs> at a farm in Welford in Berkshire, apparently a postmistress, so like, a, I guess like a, a mailwoman, uh, spotted another one and like located in a field in the middle of a field. And then even at by eight a.m. Sounds sexy. Kind of. <laughs> there was another one. Postmistress. Yeah, it's like a sexy male lady, just not you know. Yeah, like, that's what yeah. I kind of thought too. Yeah, like, ooh, right. Yeah. She like delivers the special mail. Fuck yeah. 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 Sealed uh, with a kiss. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Except this package. <laughs> yeah. Uh, another one that was pretty that had a pretty in- interesting interaction was apparently there was another one of the eggs that was discovered uh, in Winkfield in Berkshire, and this one was actually Stop found. Call them egg. They don't look yeah. like eggs. It's like eggs. They don't look like eggs. Oh, no, That's they how they described them. They're they described sausage. them as eggs. They don't look They're like eggs. <laughs> actually, it kind of looks like a fucking like fried egg. If we're going like that fried way. Egg. That's yeah. yeah when like you a, say like okay. egg, I assume egg shape, but when you look at yeah. it, it does kind of look like, like a fried egg. Okay, fried egg. Yeah, like a, yeah okay. Yeah. Fried egg. I'll fried accept eggs. the term fried egg okay. or, yeah. or saucer. Well, maybe saucer. the maybe the a egg, com, maybe a common egg in Britain at the time was not a chicken egg, it was something else and it was shaped way different. That looks way different. What, what else Most, they fucking Yeah, what other eggs are shaped like that? Like, <laughs> squished a long pretty, squished egg. Aren't eggs pretty the same? Pretty much. They're if they're all, from birds, yeah. I mean, yeah. They're and all the same. Probably reptiles. I don't, I don't know. I'm not an expert on eggs. I don't think any of us are. I'm, maybe there is. <laughs> I mean, maybe <laughs> as the I'm resident gonna, you know what? eggologist I, here. I'm going to say, as someone with a, an egg head, that surprises me. Uh, He's got a potato head. Potato yeah, head. I guess so. Yeah, russet. <laughs> uh, I've eaten tons of eggs. I've seen a lot of eggs. What kind of eggs have you eaten? Well, yeah, what other type of eggs yeah. have you eaten? Other than I've eaten quail eggs? egg. Gross. Okay. That's not. Uh, Why would you eat quail egg? There's nothing in it. It's so gross. small. I don't. It was at a, like a fancy thing one time. Gross. Okay. Continue. Fancy breakfast. Yeah. And uh, I, I've I've seen an ostrich egg. All right. You probably had, you eggs. probably had fish eggs at some point on sushi. Not a lot of yeah, eggs. I've had fish eggs. No. Yeah, I've eaten a lot of fish eggs. But I'm talking over. If we're talking fish eggs included, hundreds of thousands of eggs I've eaten. <laughs> <laughs> Every it's bite of some of that sushi's got like a thousand uh, eggs on it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So I'm like, I would say at that point, I am somewhat of an egg ex- expert. You're not egg expert. You've seen expert. eggs from like Eggspert. fucking three different fucking <laughs> animals. I'm not impressed. I've seen. Not impressed. I, I can't think of any more eggs yeah. at the moment. I'm sick. My brain. My brain's not working from the Danish diet. My brain don't work so good. <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh, so you had uh, another one of the egg saucers discovered. Oh, man. Fried egg saucers. Um, Put a picture yeah. up so people know what the fuck we're talking about. Fried eggs. And so- yeah, I mean, we have photos. They we have, have to. There, There's a number of photos of these objects being, that, yeah, that like were taken at the time. Um, the last thing I would think when I looked at this thing was egg. <laughs> yeah, I'd have to be convinced that it's a fried egg. That's it. Uh, I'd but- have to talk to a witness and be like, what kind of egg yeah. did you mean when Absolutely. you're saying egg? I mean, especially because it's not even white. It's silver. It's silver. Yeah. Like, yeah. what made you go to egg? Uh, yeah, these silvery metallic 
saucers. Saucers. All right. Yeah. Uh, so one of the, the one that was discovered in, in Wingfield, uh, Wingfield in Berkshire, uh, was discovered by a man in his garden. Now, apparently across the road, uh, from that, from that man's residence, there was a actual radar, radar station that was being used by NASA to track satellites and the new Gemini manned spacecraft that had been launched. And so the man kind of went over there and I and like picturing it in your head. It's like this dude just kind of like walked over there and like knocked onto the door and said, Hey, like, there's something you guys should take a look at in my garden, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, and go out there and take a look at it. So I guess an engineer was just like, uh, sure. Yeah. I guess I'll go take a look and see what's over there. And like, it's not a bridge. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I don't know what this is. Like you come out there and again, this is things like looking like weighing about a hundred pounds, silver metallic object with no, it didn't look like any type of like, you know, uh, mechanical look to it like it didn't have any parts or like visible parts or you know any um like joints or anything like it was just they were always like placed on the ground too right like it didn't look like there was any like indents in the ground like yeah there's no no impacts yeah Yeah, they just like look like they had just been you know they just landed there or something it's just to arrest yeah there um so the uh you know the nasa engineer was apparently visibly concerned about what whatever this thing had appeared uh, in the, in this man's garden. So the last two saucers, uh, apparently were in Chippingham and on the Isle of Sheppey, uh, were not actually discovered until, uh, both at 8 a.m. and then noon. Uh, so you had like another one, like, so from 9 a.m., where the Ministry of Defense has now become, uh, like aware. mobilized, uh, <laughs> aware and mobilized there. They finished into- their tea. <laughs> yeah. Um, and now they like they they have a total of six of these objects that they've discovered and found, um, and people are in various states of trying to investigate what's going on. So they're trying to like, I can imagine I can imagine the kind of chaos that's going on in the Ministry of Defense, where it's like you're trying to coordinate. Uh, like six different recovery sites of what is possibly extraterrestrial, if not extraterrestrial crafts, like some type of Soviet experiment or something like it, or even like if it's something like an unexploded bomb or something that somebody dug up, you know, it's like it, it must have just been madness. Like I, I like I can't imagine like that kind of uh <laughs> that kind of what's like, going on it makes you wonder like unless like like in a situation like this with like six crafts that are found right makes you wonder how like how the fuck are they covering this type of shit up if there's more than one you know what i mean because like look how hard that would be to cover this up like these are like it's in somebody's fucking garden right like some randos comes outside oh there's a saucer in my fucking garden there's one in a gold like how are you going to cover that up yeah he's like you got them you've already got you've already got the police like the local police it's like and you can imagine like imagine the police from like hot fuzz and it's like that like that police station like just like wheeling in through town this like object in the back of a truck and you're like what is that like they probably didn't even cover it like probably just like drove it through town like hey look what we found so would it be safe to assume that because of these events that we're looking at here that we would say that like at this point in time Britain probably didn't have any kind of like crash recovery plan. It didn't seem like it. Not not on a local level, I would imagine. Right? Like the big ones. But how long does it take for them to mobilize? Yeah. Right? Like, or maybe it's just too many at once where you're just, they're just like, what do we do? But at least one of them you think would have been like retrieved properly. It doesn't sound like any of them were. Yeah, I mean, nobody was really on scene until then. Like, they had maybe like a few helicopters like flying down there at the time, like in the early morning, once they had found out. But other than that, it's like um, they had at least one senior detective who actually ended up driving down to Bromley to 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 check out the police station that was down there that had had recovered their craft uh, and put it in there. And apparently, before like as he got there, the place was already mobbed with reporters and uh, like and TV crew and two TV crews. Uh, uh, that were actually filming the policemen as they're kind of like all the policemen are are there fucking posing for the gram and they're all just like posing <laughs> with the fucking this what like could this. possibly be a Soviet weapon of mass destruction it's like or an alien space the fucking kilos well, and of they, cocaine and, and pot and those and fucking they, yeah. Facebook posts yeah, yeah. Like yeah they knew flexing. and they knew about radiation at this time they knew about radiation <laughs> like in radiation <laughs> exposure so it's like they just had no fucking no. You're probably just too excited, I imagine. When you like, if this is what you're thinking, you're like, "Holy shit, we're not alone." UFOs, here they are. All yeah, reason goes up like, the window, just touch it. Get, it's touch fucking it, like, lick it. 
eat it. I just imagine it's just the, the super troopers thing, and like you know, the guys in there spread it on, like you know, yeah. just like standing in front of this this UFO thing, you know, putting their feet up, Captain Morgan in it, and just like you're like, what the fuck? So apparently, this detective that went down there just fucking ripped these guys a new one once he got down there, and just like went into like a fucking incandescent rage at these guys, like what the fuck are you guys thinking? <laughs> Bringing this thing in here. Um, so uh, once that detective down that got down there, apparently they, then he was followed by intelligence agents that showed up in their black car, uh, you know, sent from Whitehall, which is kind of like the, the federal place in um, like the federal yeah, FBI kind of guys that they, they sent down there. And these guys came actually pro- somewhat properly equipped with Geiger counters and to, to figure out if this thing was like po- posed to, you know, a health threat being it being radioactive or something like that, if that could possibly be. And I can also imagine the fucking cops, like as these guys get out with their, their Geiger counters, like, Oh shit, we should have thought of that. <laughs> <laughs> like fuck our, our fucking, you know, is like our hair going to fall out and our like, you know, fucking dick's going to fall like, off. Look at these like, fucking wankers. Yeah. All right it's like, it's like it's like oh man like bobby weren't you just like licking that thing <laughs> like it's fucking is your tongue gonna fall off now like oh <laughs> shit you know i like that the bobby the bobby named bobby yeah the it's bobby named bobby right like <laughs> um and now, like, uh, when they got the Geiger counters out, they did find that this, you know, fortunately for those people who are, you know, the police officers who were fucking like rubbing all up against this fucking flying saucer, that it wasn't radioactive. They um, weren't about to melt down. <laughs> and um, so the police had actually tried drilling into the saucer as well. That sounds smart. That's a great idea. <laughs> sounds like a really good idea. Um, that's a Zell. That's a Zell move for what sure. What if it's a bomb? <laughs> <laughs> But Try instead, it. instead of encountering some type of, you know, impenetrable alien alloy that they're, you know, that we hear in, in a lot of the, the other like uh, stories of uh, UFO retrievals, like you can't even scratch it with, you know, torches or, you know, diamond, diamond tip drills or anything like that. They, they just use a regular machinist drill, it seems. Uh, but inside, they discovered that there was some kind of like rotting. Wait. Alien corpse alien corpse or something else you're going to find out right after we take a short beer break we're going to be right yeah. back a diarrhea break
So yeah, stinking alien corpses is what we were talking about. Right, rotting, yeah. stinking corpses. It's like a imagine a Cadbury cream egg left out in the sun. <laughs> I mean, yeah, For the the, cra- the crack UFO retrieval team that is the Bromley like regional. That's like the Bromley, PD, yeah, yeah. <laughs> county police. The Bromley County yeah. Police um, are drilling into this uh, this object and discover inside. What is seems to be some type of just this rotting, smelly dough like material that they described. Just it, it smelled absolutely terrible. And from for a while after they had opened maybe this thing, and it released, maybe this it. was their first voyage, right? And maybe that's what they found out. They sent the aliens, right? They 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 were they were occupied by a real, you know, live alien. Right. And that's what happened to them. They got fucking eviscerated and turned into mush. Actually, this, is, this was an extraterrestrial Titan submarine scenario. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, there's a. I mean, Andrew's not that far off. I was like, I remember there's one science fiction story where essentially one of the ways for long distance space travel is essentially like you accelerate to the point where your body just turns into mush. Like it just breaks up. It just naturally because it's just the G forces. And then you're reconstituted back by like a little like nano machine, but it's like it puts you back together at the end of it. So you basically die from, and then you come the back. Ooze? Yeah, it just well, picks like, you up in the yeah. Have you seen those you. like those those fucking pictures of like the human body that would that was created to survive car accidents? Yeah. Yeah, like yeah. kind of looks like Braden a little bit, but like worse. Yeah. Right? That's what kind of what no it neck. <laughs> um so it wouldn't it wouldn't be until a Scotland Yard bomb disposal squad uh got orders to go and check one of the objects with the, what they had at the time was a portable x-ray equipment and then they got to take a look which, at what was inside funny, of these objects. I find that funny because they're like f- fucking Gary over there already fucking cracked one of these eggs open. Well, they're like, but, All right, like well now get the bomb squad. I'm wondering if these are like because they're they're landed so far apart, like they're not all in the same spot, right? Like this could yeah. be like just the difference in like fucking oh, yeah. minds working these cases, right? Like, yeah, that's true. I never thought about right? it. They, happening simultaneous. The fucking We're country the bumpkins, one. the yeah. chavs are fucking drilling into it, and then like the more fucking tea drinker kind of guys are like, well, maybe we should X-ray it. Should, should X-ray it? Yes. Indubitably. Quite right, Uh So one of the objects. So. Most of, or if like it, most of the objects had been issuing these high pitched, um, like a high frequency type noises that had been coming from these craft, but there were one or two that actually one a low and a low hum. Some right. that's the scariest part to me. Yeah, yeah the fact that those things. I would be like, okay, listen, this thing looks kind of hokey until I heard sounds coming from. I'd be like, no. <laughs> um, but apparently, one or two of them like weren't making that sound, and one of those. Okay, so that one's safe to drill. Then. <laughs> yeah. One of these, one of these apparently, that one, which was discovered in Winkfield, was actually apparently taken down to the police station there, uh, and they just put it in the lost property office. It's like, <laughs> just like, 
<laughs> Imagine like get him misplaced their uh, fucking flying saucer. A couple oh, ETs shit. show up like, hey, like, did you guys find some type of like silver? They were really, they were really taking a objects. shotgun approach of what to do. Eh? They're like, all right, well, one of them just put lots of fun. Maybe they'll come back. Yeah, they're just, like posting up posters outside, like lost saucer, like just posters on like telephone poles. So <laughs> just this thing, like it's it, like when the cops confiscate, like a they find like a fucking ounce of coke or something. They're like, yeah, and the owner can come down to the police station to pick it up <laughs> uh, but you know the, i guess the, i guess the the blokes in chippingham like were just like didn't give a fuck because apparently they disposed of their uh object in a controlled explosion by bomb disposal experts as you do <laughs> i was like you know what just get rid of it <laughs> Like, like, it's the only best way. The only good way to get rid of this is just blow it up. Like their dynamite was going bad. They needed an excuse to blow something up. Yeah, which, uh, uh, yeah. Like they need to put it in the budget for next year. They need to use it. Yeah, if we don't use this, it. we're not going to get refunded. Yeah, yeah I mean, and also blowing shit up is awesome. Yeah, it's yeah. awesome. Yeah. We're like, can we blow it up? Yeah, and, and honestly, good. how often were these guys getting to do that at this time? Probably never. Not a lot. No, <laughs> we itching to blow shit up. Yeah, like people go all the way to Thailand to blow up cows with a bazooka. <laughs> Cambodia. 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 Or Cambodia. It's <laughs> awful. I would never do it, but this is, I'm blowing up a saucer. I'd do that. That happens in there. Um, so even, mm-hmm. even after most of these investigations, like they weren't sh- the, the officers and the authorities still weren't sure exactly what these things were. But there would be a group of trainee engineers from the Ministry of Defense's Royal Aircraft Establishment in Farnborough in Hampshire that apparently they knew exactly what these craft were so uh apparently the group of them were led they by cracked the case <laughs> cracked the eggs um they cracked the, ca- the, they case. Cracked the case of the silver eggs, of the silver eggs. <laughs> so this group of young engineers uh were headed up by one christopher southall and roger palmer who were both just uh 21 age 21 Robert palmer Roger Palmer. Addicted to love? Oh, okay. Cool. (laughs) Um, And these craft were actually part of an elaborate hoax they had put together. These fucking (laughs) bastards. And and listen, as far as like engineering hoaxes go, like. They didn't mess around. They didn't mess around because like in our, in our area, like every now and then the (laughs) engineering class would suspend a, used to suspend a car from the bridge right like Underneath how it. like by rope Chains? no by cable cable just wrap it up right there. that's the engineering hoax they right. would have a car but it was like so the car is now suspended in air over water underneath the bridge <laughs> i don't think they do can do it on the new bridge but they used to, was it the old one they used to do that i don't i, remember I don't seeing, remember that i don't remember that i remember seeing a couple times we were like, fucking kids man I remember seeing it, and then I remember oh. the engineering engineering prank. But it's like, so you know, engineering pranks pretty good. But as far as this one goes, like fucking legendary. <laughs> well, I, well, I mean, the idea behind it totally crazy. But like making a couple pa- paper mache fucking saucers and dumping them in a guy's garden, as opposed to like hanging a fucking car from bridge. <laughs> I, well, now, now that a little you bit more it, engineering with one than the other, I guess is what I'm now saying. Now that no, that, now that you mentioned, I remember, I do remember that now because the bridge used to lift, so they would yeah. they make sure to try and be at the front when the bridge lift. They would drive it on and have these special like loops, and then they just leave the car there. And there's this car dangling on the suspended bridge. That's cool. It picture. would wheel wheel up with the car and then wheel down. And then there's just a car hanging over the water. Oh, that makes sense. I was never. I'm not yeah, because they. Was, I was I, like, how to get there? To tr- it triggered my memory. I was like, that's right. Yeah, they used to drive. It. They would drive it, <clears throat> and they, they would have these like special things rigged up, and they would just hook it on as the bridge was lifting. They would hook it onto the edge. <laughs> how do you get? Uh, how do you get off after that? I don't know. Uh, well, it would sit there. there. I remember it would sit there for a while. They probably just clipped them, and then this drop. They're they're in the bottom of the lake, just covered in mud, amongst yeah. the other thousands of cars <laughs> and bodies. <laughs> yeah. And cars with bodies. And, yeah. The, yeah. Um, yeah, so, we just added a new one recently, unfortunately. So the the whole hoax apparently was conceived as part of a uh, was part of an effort to raise money for charity, which was part of what the uh, what universities and 
the UK, I suppose, have they have a thing called Rag Week, and I, I'm not, fa- I wasn't familiar with it until this, <laughs> until <laughs> this. Uh, we have those too. Yeah, we have those too. But it's not a universal. <laughs> They're not fun. Yeah. Um, so Rag appara- it's the worst here. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, Rag Week is the time where, uh, like, at universities, like clubs, organizations, kind of get together, and they all like kind of do- all moody <laughs> and angry, and it's, it's all you know when they're all together at the same time, they kind of sync up and all of the stuff. But yeah, like it's sync up through cycles. <laughs> um, <laughs> So uh, apparently it's a time for all the organizations to kind of put together these elaborate uh, charity projects and like raise money for a good cause and, and, and all of that. So apparently the Farm Borough Rag Committee agreed to the plan to distribute these objects um, uh, across <laughs> across southern England uh, starting in January of 1967. So they, for months, like a new, exactly planning it what out. Yeah. What they had been wanting to do. So there was also a, a kind of a second part to, um, the, the planning of this. Um, a lot of the engineers, uh, is Christopher Southall and Robert Roger Palmer would talk about, um, later, like they would say, like, you know, describing the kind of the, how their, uh, group was kind of, all into science fiction and all that things as you would as you're an engineer. Like I imagine like science fiction is cool. Like you think about these, all these cool objects in science fiction and get inspiration, imagination, all this. And they thought, you know, every UFOs again, like we said, were already kind of part of the zeitgeist. So they thought that, Hey, like this would be really cool, but also, you know, what would be really interesting is if we do this and we can actually see how authorities would react if there was an alien invasion or a suspected alien invasion and just, and we could actually find out how prepared Britain was for something like this. Um, Not very, not at all. Apparently. (laughs) Um, So, yeah, which I thought it was, I think that's really interesting because it's like, even if you think about that today, like, you know, a lot of, a lot of hoaxers just hoax to hoax, right? Or because, well, the, these days it's now more like a, it's a, almost a capitalistic kind of thing. It's like you hoax to make the pranks and you get the views and you get the whatever, I, you know, I that kind it. of thing, you know? I, I will, I will make an opposing stance on that. I know you think it's interesting because it's like, oh, they're testing to see if they're prepared. If you said that's the reason you were doing that, they'd be like, for your next attack. That's why you were seeing if we were prepared. You were testing. They were obviously testing mm. for a t- <laughs> terrorist attack. <laughs> <You're> like, <"Ew." laughs> uh, so yeah it, it's just like an interesting thing to be like okay well you know you want to you want to see because i mean even back then now we kind of like it, it, i think it's just interesting in the fact that now ufo culture has come to a point where it's like we're already kind of even if you're into it like we are like you've already heard enough stories that have developed over the years about you know uh uh, you know allegations and reports of how alien craft were retrieved and um you know the cover-ups and you're really kind of familiar with all this stuff and like you yeah. don't you you kind of have an idea even like even if you've never seen it or whatever you have an idea what would happen if in your head probably already like a government's going to come and you know black bag everybody and then they're going to you know, send in trucks get them out of there cover everything up you know brush out all the impact and then get out of there whatever but at this time back in 1967 like you know we had any idea exactly what that would look like so you know this kind of prank being like yeah we can actually see it you know just see what happens um i think is kind of an interesting take on this kind of that observation it's, prank <laughs> like it's interesting it, like it seemed to like i i don't remember when when was uh war of the worlds it was like in the 30s right late 30s the bro- the original broadcast radio broadcast yeah cuz like i remember the the fucking the original broadcast kind of created a little bit of like of a mass hysteria for people right yeah. Oh, yeah 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 and we didn't really get a similar reaction with this we had people drilling them like oh it's fucking weird there's something weird in my garden like you know like nobody really was like what the fuck the yeah. aliens are here like panic like and you'd think you know post-world war well i mean too everybody would be fucking it, freaking the fuck out like, apart from the, it's cold the, war like, too attack yeah and you but you bring yeah. up uh, andrew brings up a good point where it's like yeah like uh, when I when I think about this time, like the 1960s and this things, like even even um, I think um, uh, Palmer and them, like they talked about the the general um, the general kind of 
feeling at the time of w- what it was. It was like the hippie era. And it was like people were more kind of just like UFOs and these things were more whimsical than anything else. You know, this was this was the time where it was like more about, you know, 60s is yeah, kind of like Star they, Trek they stuff. Had, it's like, they hadn't seen an alien fucking spit out a little mouth and fucking puncture skulls <laughs> yeah. or an, an alien with a fucking coil around a guy's neck going, raise me. Yeah. I mean, even if you think if you think back to like the UFO cases around like the 50s and 60s, like alien contact and those who claim to have been in contact with aliens, like it was always positive. Like it was always like a majority of them were never like anything that was like, yeah, again, like it's not fire in the sky kind of stuff that happened, you know, the Travis Walton stuff and these things like people being taken against their will and, you know, all kinds of triangular objects being placed in places where triangular objects shouldn't go. Um uh, you know, it, at this time, it's like UFOs and aliens are just kind of like they're just part of something that's just like they're people are more eager to explore it and figure out what it is um, at that time. Or it seems that way. That's what the, the general sentiment seemed to be. Uh, so. <laughs> so to, to kind of perpetrate this thing, uh, the these uh, students had constructed these six oval flattened objects, um, which were about 54 inches long, 30 inches wide and 20 inches deep. And they had molded these things from fiberglass. And then they apparently laced uh, with they laced that with artist graphite to give them this kind of otherworldly sheen, uh, which would make them definitely look more extraterrestrial than anything else. Uh, they kind of kind of like is that silver or is that like black like graphite no it's i think it's like silver i think it's silvery silvery color like i mean we have the pictures like we have the photos of of what they look like uh as like you know because we have tons of pictures because fucking bromley police officers were posting posing with it so it's like we have a number of photos of these things so we can get these kind of pulled up here um so yeah, the, like yeah, that's so a fried egg. That's yeah, it. Like a fried egg so, oh. looking craft that just kind of appeared in your little things. And they're not they're not that big. Like they're not that big. Two two men can kind of lift and carry these and move these things around um uh from where they were placed. So it's not like they were uh you needed a, a crane or an entire team to kind of move these things. Um the smallest flying saucer we've oh, ever, ever. so they're miles. Look at this, look at this, look at this hand drum out if that's to be believed yeah they trucked you know, like yeah 100 100 100, miles, like 150 miles 150 or something miles apart yeah. in the line so uh um, so yeah this is 100 percent different crews different agencies different police departments <laughs> uh so in the um uh w- when they kind of uh, conceived these objects like they wanted them to appear as alien as possible. Um, so even th- so they had the idea, like not only just about the design on the outside of the craft, but the interior as craft as well. So that's when they added uh, electric, el- like electronic sound equipment, which they would be encased inside the object to produce that, that high pitched wailing sound that, that mm. was reported when the objects were, were discovered. And then also they, they filled the inside with this, jelly like goo uh is what they described uh, which was a which was essentially just bread dough that had been boiled and then placed inside of the object to make it even seem even more alien if somebody were to crack it open uh, so it looked like, like would look like human brains kind of oh yeah and it smelled terrible like it was just, like you're saying it, it just it real stank been in there for a couple of days starting to rot <laughs> nice yeah. layer of mold yeah if you remember how long it took them to put to put that thing in there and it just yeah it probably just was terrible to to behold that that scent uh now uh again like they were they wanted no giveaways to these uh the, to the features of these craft they didn't want anything you know aerials control surfaces they don't want anything kind of showing that would kind of give it away as a you know earthly designed ship they wanted this thing to look kind of full uh, like full extraterrestrial feeling that these things were c- completely smooth. Um, you know, it seemed to be at least the, if made of one uh, complete piece of material uh, over these things. Uh, but so once these things were completed, uh, which was, you know, uh, once they had these things completed, apparently they, like they hid them, they covered them. And then in the early hours of September 4th, they set out in teams uh, to go ahead and uh, in two man teams to go and place these things in their respective spots of where they had kind of showed like where they were going to put them. And like this, this was so, such kind of so like, hold a, on, hold on. How yeah. many just, just for, 
my how, how many were I just want to count how many there was. So one, two, three, four, five, six, six seven, eight, seven, eight, nine. There was nine. Nine in total. There's six. If this okay. map is correct with the dots. Um or may, unless it's six and those are just marking Bristol reading and London. I think those are, yeah, I think yeah. those are just so marking the towns. So it so, looks like six. Yeah. So the teams of two are dropping each one of these off. Mm-hmm. So two, four, six, eight. Yep. You know, math. math. That many people uh Twelve. working on this. <laughs> six right? times two. Working is on this together. Uh just yeah. keep that number keep that number in 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 your head for later when i give you my theory here and so they had been um I, they had been briefed that if they were to be pulled over by police or stopped by police and you know asking them what they were doing at the uh, you know within the wee hours of the morning uh they were gonna have to you know they kind of got their story straight that said that oh we stayed out late at a party is essentially what they were kind of told to say you had the best you had the best fucking cover if you got picked up i would have been like i found this fucking saucer <laughs> we, found, around, we, right? found this, we found this fucking saucer yeah but then you have then to you directly just, you know lie then you're you're already involved in it you know it's like i i, I could see that you didn't want anybody to know exactly mm-hmm. what these things were um or it make you know make it a bit more mysterious where it's like you know they already suspect you of being you know you'd be the first suspect if somebody were to mm-hmm. ask about this yeah um so <laughs> um like the whole the whole thing apparently by uh what is it uh, mr south hall uh who's one of the people involved in this and you know this is he's probably i think he's like almost in his 80s at this point but he had been interviewed about this a couple of years ago um and he had said that the whole the whole meaning or the point behind the hoax was for it to be uh taken seriously that it was like they, again like they wanted them to to be uh to be alert like they wanted to see what would happen like if these people if, if an alien invasion were to occur what is how what would happen they would how react would you, yeah. how would you react to it um you know and which is something that you kind of be like oh yeah like that kind of seems kind of important i suppose you know like you'd want to know how how your government is going to respond to like something that's we still uh, don't know to this day how to we respond still, yeah whether it is but the thing is but the thing is like we do have there are there are, there are protocols. protocols there are protocols like official documented protocols of like what what exactly is like the chain of command what would kind of like the basics of what would happen on you know first contact like there are you know actually, that all there are actual documents we, that we have that if that there's an actual say, say someone in current military of say united states or any any western country found if you're first on the scene an actual alien maybe still alive craft out of his vehicle all protocols out the window <laughs> yeah i mean plans out only the window yeah, survive yeah, yeah. Out the window. It, it is protocol yeah. to fucking say welcome to earth and punch it in the face yeah, yeah, yeah. should be this, this it has to uh, be. and then it's- tweet it instantly but it's like makes me wonder too. It's like, would we would they have responded differently if like that that place that they approached that NASA radar station would have like caught those on radar coming into our atmosphere and then deployed the proper? You know what I mean? The fact that they were just randomly found on the ground is kind of why everybody started scrambling. Like I know with my work, you know what I mean. Somebody called nine one one. They call us. We go downstairs in the ambulance. We get dispatched the call. We drive to it. Every once in a while shit happens right in front of us. And you're like, you know what I mean? You're like fucking discombobulated for, for, for a second. Cause you're like taken aback. Cause you're like, Oh, this isn't the natural process of things. Like we don't, you know, like, and you have to go with it, you know, kind of in a little bit of a discombobulated and fucking flustered state, as opposed to, Hey, we sensed it. We'll send the proper channels. Everybody knows what to do. Let's go through the list. We're prepared. Let's, you know, mm. yeah, that checks out. Yeah. <laughs> um but by 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 all accounts and like people who observe like what happened like this was a big embarrassment for a lot of the uh, like british authorities like po- like local police like everyone from the local police to the higher ups over on whitehall like it's like yeah you all have egg on your face because like you guys had no idea what the fuck was going on it doesn't seem like you it's guys had any egg. idea what you were doing uh like you just this hodgepodge of like responses to it and you weren't getting people out where they need to be and you show up and it's like you got a bunch of dudes posing with their fucking industrial drill just like hammering this thing open like nobody had any idea what was going on um so uh there were questions of course about like you know because this hoax did 
it did garner such a response where you had a, you had a mobilization of a large uh, a large amount of mm-hmm. uh, government and local police like authorities and and resources like to this to get everybody out where they needed to be so fast and it, it was a question ludicrous for, <laughs> yeah. for like what like they say the aftermath of it is that this is just an engineering student's hoax like that, uh, that, that this much resources were put to it yeah and then so there's the question after the after the whole thing kind of dies down it's like well do we arrest them like do we punish them like you know they played a whole joke and they made us all look like idiot they made the government look like Idiots. Well, and like, they and the, there would have been a lot that like the cost of this of retrieving and blowing them up and stuff. There was like definitely a cost. Like so, it wasn't it wasn't like there was no harm, no foul. Like there was like yeah, no one got hurt, but like well, and other people they, who are let's say having emergencies or needing police exactly, services, they they're all tied up with fucking papier mache fucking saucers. Uh, I, I'm telling I'm telling you right now, if you pulled this stunt now. You would at least look at a mischief charge that would go through the court system and then you maybe would get off with like a, a some sort of like community service or something. You wouldn't it wouldn't be a thing like this. That, nothing. No charges. No. They didn't right? do any. Nothing at all. Um I think the uh, yeah. The um I think the sentiment from the authority side was that they just wanted to go away. Well, they just, they're like, if we prosecute them, like, you know, at that time, it's like a prank is still kind of a prank. Well, then it's it's like, kind of like, well, yeah, if you prosecute them, then there's a a paper trail too, right? Well, it's all, yeah. And then you have to go to court and then you have to have these people show up. There's a big paper trail. Wasn't it all over the news and shit already? Anyways. Well, here, that's, that's, you want want to hear my little theory I'm going to run you down? Let's hear it. Yeah. All right. So it's like, how many people would you say perpetrated this hoax? I mean, at least 12 that we know. At least 12. Right? There is only two named. Well, we don't know that there was 12, though. They weren't all put at the same time. The, the two that are named say they went in teams of two to drop these things off in each. Yeah. Right? But then say teams of two. It could have been maybe three teams of two. Each took a couple. Okay, so more than two people. But there's only two people ever named. Right is this Christopher Southall and Roger Palmer? Now, just let's just kind of go through an experiment here. Let's say for a second that these six objects were in fact, you know, extraterrestrial or uh, uh, something that came down, and they're in cities. Lots of people are seeing them. What would be the best way? that you have to cover this up and you're like, okay, I, we now have to cover this up quickly, shut it down quickly, get these things out of here. Right. I was like, this to me would be a perfect cover story. And I started, it started to pique my interest when I started to try to look these guys up and you can't find shit about these two guys other than this one BBC article. And there's this one picture of these two guys. That's I, no, I watched an interview with them. I didn't see any interview with them. Yeah, there was a, on YouTube. I watched the whole interview with them. They talked about the whole thing, why they did it. They're trying to raise money. I couldn't find, I couldn't and, find one interview with them. Yeah, they're no, raising I, money for a charity of some kind. Yeah, they were doing it for I charity. I saw it written in one of the, in the BBC interview article, but I couldn't find the actual interview. Yeah, I can find it for you if you want. I can send it to you. But Damn it. They, yeah, they were interviewed. That blew my theory to the water. <laughs> I thought this was, this was all a state hoax to cover up a true UFO. Still could be. They could be patsies. Patsies, yep. Yeah. They're patsies. Um, so yeah, it's like you had the, the the government. I think they also didn't want to prosecute because they're just like, why? Like it just yeah. Again, this would draw more attention to the fact that they were ill prepared. They seemed they numbies. appeared to be ill prepared for something that you know you would probably consider a, you know at least a, something of a, a minor threat. I suppose like or like not a minor threat, but it's just like that's something that is improbable but it could still be possible that you should probably think about, <laughs> you know, that people, um, I mean, even from the, even from the point of, like we said before, like, even if they're not necessarily extraterrestrial craft, but if they're like, we're covering some type of like Soviet space project or, uh, you know, a downed, you know, some type of down Soviet satellite, any of those kinds of things. And like the, the fact that it was really just, just sending people out there. Nobody was really taking it, seemed to be taking it seriously. And, um, 
I mean, yeah. I honestly is- think there's something to be said for because they were so caught off guard by it. You know what I mean? Like, not saying that we wouldn't be caught off guard every time there is a close, there is some type of encounter. But for the most part, if you get to like, you know what I mean, catch it on whatever technology we have, and then it goes through proper channels. Like, the proper channels aren't the fucking Bromley fucking PD with their little billy clubs and you know what i mean like randos showing up to mrs johnson's garden yeah and, you know you, can you say gotta that. F- you gotta send me an interview because the only interview i can find is the one with i Dr. just sent Clark. it to you i put it in the group oh did you yeah it's in the group and I'll fast forward to uh, i'll tell you the time uh so they're uh they're just it's it's an interesting case to be looking at this from the perspective of today or like looking back on this and being like okay like could you could you possibly imagine somebody doing this day? Now, like we we do have hoaxes kind of this day, and probably even I would say the volume of hoaxes has definitely gone up as opposed like, um, but especially video quality. hoaxes. Yeah, video, video hoaxes, hoaxes are everywhere. Yeah, it's like we and we are we watch tons of we watch tons of UFO videos every week, and like you know most of them are CGI or end up being CGI. Uh, and that's not unusual. Like, it's just like, yeah, like you see it all the time. So it's almost like you can't believe anything that you see, uh, any type of video almost. And it's like, when you actually have something where it's like, people took the, tr- took the time to create like actual physical objects, um, and then go in such a way as to distribute them, no like way. synchronized throughout it. all the play, <laughs> like how throughout the, like, uh, over 150 miles, like who does that? Hoax Except for hoax, man. These are these are these are government plants. I can't find anything about these. The same interview is used as a picture for the other article, and then there's nothing about this guy. And the one guy supposed to exactly. they talk. Yeah, they, they interview them, them. That's why I think they're they're just they're actors, state actors. Okay, all right. Uh, you know, the only thing I can think off the top of my head that is like somewhat similar uh, to this one in recent history is the the obelisks, the metal obelisk that popped up. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. Did we ever find out what those were? Was the five our, chewing our gum fucking advertisement. Was it five? Really? <laughs> yeah. It was five five chewing gum? It was five chewing gum. Was it five chewing gum? Or was it just an art project? Yeah. Really? Uh, I, they did I not do a good job because I knew about the obelisk, but not the five. I thought we made a joke about that. That's why oh, I brought yeah, it up. No, it's, it, was a type of, it was like an art project. People came out later with like videos of them like in, you know placing them and all that stuff in those locations. But Those are also patsies, Dan. Yes. <laughs> Stage photos, mm-hmm. patsies. Yeah. Uh, and so it's like most of the time that you, you see these kinds of things, they're more like they're like art installations. There's just like, you know, those things of spontaneous art where somebody puts something somewhere, making some type of statement or just, you know, creating art for art's sake. But when it's something like this, that is like, not only is this a prank, but again, like we said, like it's functional. It's being like, we want to see what the response is for an alien invasion. Like we, we are interested in this and this is the only way, because how, how do you, how do you get this information? Really? Like how, how would you get this information back then? Like, I don't know. You can't walk up to the, you can't walk up to the, scotland yard or you know any of the like government you know intelligence mi6 can't walk up to them and be like hey like yeah. if aliens show up like what are you guys gonna do and then they'll, they'll like kick you out of the building and james bond will fucking roundhouse kick you in the face or something like i don't know but <laughs> shoot you. then drink a martini after right and um you know so if you're interested in that kind of thing i'm like to me i'm like that's actually not a bad idea <laughs> to be like yeah i kind of want to know what exactly what they would do um but now these days, of course, it's like um, we were saying, like talking before the show, it's like if you did something like this today or why, like, why don't we see more stuff like this today? I mean, it is it. Number one, I'd say it's labor intensive it's, and it's way like, harder to. Uh, yeah, it is. It is harder. I get well, especially in their CT CT. TV fucking everywhere. Like they would have got these guys on film doing it for mm-hmm. sure. And it's like I would also say part of it is like the hesitant, the hesitant. You're hesitant to do this because it's just the backlash that you would get once you get once it gets out. Because I, I would say, like again, back then the general sentiment around the UFO community was something of more like uh, positive exploration, kind of like meeting these intelligent beings that have some type of either positive message or they want to share their knowledge with us. Not necessarily these are you know X Files. They're coming to. Uh, what what was the X Files thing? Like they they were cloning them, and then like their human host bodies, whatever, like all kinds of nefarious plans that are wrapped up 
um, along with the government. And like back then it was just like, it was, it was OG Star Trek, right? You're like going out there and you're like, Hey, I want to meet green babes like that. You know, that <laughs> Captain Kirk gets to make out with it. Like, yeah. Right. Like that's, three boobed babes. Yeah, cool yeah. as fuck. Um, but today, like, I feel like there, there's definitely a section and maybe this is true in, in many like niche communities, but in, ufo community there is definitely like a facet that is almost fanatical about the belief in ufos and i feel like if you did something like this today you'd be getting two to three death threats like a week for a month and a half oh yeah <laughs> at least oh yeah you'd be like coyote peterson when he faked the the big oh shit. yeah fuck yeah her. what a yeah. bastard why would we bring that up again? Fuck, that guy. <laughs> fuck that guy fuck, fuck that, that guy. guy that guy can fuck suck ass uh yeah, big time it's just it's, yeah i mean just the, the amount of stuff that we get sometimes it's just like you know people people thinking you know that's not a bug <laughs> uh and yeah so it's, it's like i feel like if people are just kind of hesitant to kind of do these things and the fact that it's like you know it's not people people want to believe but again like i said that this prank is like a functional uh component to it it's like you want to see what's going to happen um, when the government has to respond to something like this and like see what they do exactly, and we, it's like we don't really get to see some of that stuff. And but even now, I mean, I I suppose like they wouldn't even really take it seriously, like because it's just like it has happened more than once. It's just being like, oh, you you, know. you would definitely be charged if your hoax garnered. This oh yeah, much. you'd get something federal attention if it made it into well, the newspaper people who are like, doing fucking annoying tiktok videos are getting charged yeah <laughs> Going after well, they're everybody. also throwing chairs off balconies <laughs> yeah. dude if you t- if you try to if you try to pull up into someone's driveway and toss of one of those flying saucers into somebody's y- property over here in the united states you, you get shot <laughs> you can't even pull into somebody's driveway to turn around no. in the states no. all right <laughs> they want to do that shit um oh. so that is something yeah that's also an added danger that you would not something you have to factor into your your idea of making this because it's like yeah i don't think you'd be able to i don't think you'd be able to pull something like this today um and back then it was just kind of like oh it's just fun like just to see what happens and um we're not gonna have a fun time to be alive when people would just you could just have a little fun uh, at the government's expense yeah now it's like you know (laughs) (laughs) god God. You, you will die yeah so I was, I think it's just an interesting thing. And it's like, yeah, but for me, it's like, it's, it's kind of difficult for me to, to, to be like, you know, this kind of throws, this could possibly throw the, um, the idea that, you know, governments are properly trained to respond to these things. But maybe this was, you know, I thought about it before the show is like, maybe this one, this event and maybe other ones, like subsequent ones that happened after this kind of forced the hand of that because we mentioned before like there are protocols now there are like written down um you know i forgot what the i forgot what the document is but there's an actual document like for the white house for yeah, but you, in the in the think- in the event of encounter with intelligent extraterrestrial and, uh, life there is a set protocol i'm sure there was back then too but you think these fucking little numpty towns are gonna know that they're gonna be in the know of that type of shit. Like they're gonna have some type of fucking bat signal that they get right. to put but out. But that's for the but MIB that's part of up. but that's part of the documentation now where it is like there is a role for local authorities and stuff that you're supposed to tell them and supposed to well, you're supposed to get with them. Here's, like here's they, my question. they have a place they have a place because you know, I mean you would know if you're the government playing this out, obviously you're probably not gonna be the first ones there. Local authorities are gonna have to be involved. And maybe no, the, yeah, like I this mean, is, uh, yeah. do they have the same what is what is because like I know our justice system in Canada and well our our, is, our justice is based off theirs, but like for us it's like you have RCMP in these rural communities that are a, like a they're the federal. So I was gonna say, they, I, like now they have like a UK police service. Do they? Oh, right. Okay. So but that's gonna be a lot easier. Did they have that then? When was that? Well, it doesn't sound like it because you had like Bromley police, and but maybe that's just how they're what they're naming them. But, yeah, but I don't maybe know. it's like you were saying like Kelowna police and it's all RCMP. You know what I mean? Like, I wonder, yeah. that's what I'm, that's my curiosity is that when did they when did they have a federal police force? Like there is, is, is that established? Cause then it would be the same thing. And maybe they would, maybe not the like front, you know, beat, beat cop who's swinging his little fucking twirly 
twirly stick around <laughs> whistling wouldn't know what to do right but like very soon it would go up to the fucking black hall right where he would start making uh quick decisions right that's where i was kind of interested in, kind of piqued my interest in i wonder britain <laughs> federal police law enforcement okay law enforcement They all wear the hats, right? Yeah. Bobbies. <clears throat> what are you learning over there? Their regional services are complicated. So they have a UK wide agency that like oversees yeah. territorial police forces. So you would you would think they would have some sort of policy, but like I, you know, like we were saying, it probably not the beat officers would know. And that's when like the black hall inspector, that's probably the go between. The big boys, right? Like, oh, it goes up the chain, and then it's like, get the Geiger counters. <laughs> well, I mean, even then, Stop it's like, it. <laughs> yeah, it's like, but then it's like, yeah, maybe this also kind of brought up the, I mean, it's a good kind of thing where it's like, yeah, it, it showed a bit of weakness and being like, this is a vulnerability or weakness, a vulnerability in their kind of thing to be like, even if, again, if it's not extraterrestrial and it's something Soviet, possibly, like we said, biological in the biological weapon in nature or something like that, you would want your local police to be like, Hey, don't pose with it and don't drill into it. How about just mark off the space until federal authorities get there with a well, actual say, like, team? You, like, you don't think don't especially do fresh out of world war two, they'd be well-versed in like chain of command. Being like, or even like, like unexploded like, like bombs, like finding unexploded well, bombs yeah. and be like, "Hey, maybe we shouldn't drill into this thing." Like, uh, <laughs> like yeah, it's weird. Uh, but or maybe we shouldn't wheel it into the middle of town. Maybe this is some kind of like, you know, I don't. Yeah, I mean, like it was. This was 1967. It wasn't that. Like it wasn't the fucking sheriff of Nottingham, you know, <laughs> pulling up on this thing, stabbing him with a fucking sword. Like, <laughs> oh. yeah, we all know that you know bears don't talk for real. Is he the sheriff? Which one was the sheriff? He was, yeah, a, he was a wolf. Well, he, uh, well, he's a little wolf. No, he, no, he's a bear. He was I mean, a bear. The I'm, fucking he's a bear from the Robin Hood one. Unless he's like a big fat he's bear, a big fat wolf. I'm pretty sure. Or a big fat wolf. I, Are you sure? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. No, look it up. I always no, thought he was a bear. He's like a wolf or a dog of some type. Like, he's not, I don't. He's not a bear. Big. Um, what's his face? Yeah. Little John is a bear. Well, I thought he was a fat bear. No, I don't think so. Oh, it was a wolf. You were right. He oh, was originally a goat. Crazy. Yeah. Oh yeah. I thought he was a fucking bear for I sure. He, he looks like a bear. bear. Do, sure, he's, he's a wolf. Got that big. <laughs> that's a fat wolf. Man. Yeah, he's a fat because that's, yeah because he's this, that's yeah, he's, unhealthy. This look. Yeah, because he's they're robbing all the poor people and he gets to eat all good off of them. Like yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Living. Now that I'm looking at him, he does look in my brain. I thought bear, but now that I'm looking, I'm like definitely. <laughs> oh man, without a doubt. Yeah, he's such an asshole. Oh yeah. It's just it's just so interesting to me. Everything everything you find out about this case like retroactively about talking about what these guys did is all from basically from 2017. Within a month, articles came out, this one interview. Can't find anything about these guys other than the shittiest like Ecoscapes website that apparently Christopher Southall runs absolutely nothing else on there they've only ever done that one interview and then that interview is cited in other like interview articles by the bbc that aren't they obviously just use the answers from that one video just saying interesting i mean they do have the newspaper clippings from that time and stuff i mean that... yeah it's all in those uh micro fish or whatever you call them those little fucking mm -hmm. discs you go blow them up at the library yep my spider senses are tingling. I don't know. Something's fishy with this one. I don't know what it is. <laughs> you probably have some of that uh, uncooked bread dough. Yeah, it's probably, probably some of those. <laughs> it's probably those Danishes. <laughs> All those Danishes I've been eating. Um, theory of the week. I know we got one. We do. Um, oh, let me pull them up here. Um, I had them up, and then I closed it. Steve Will. Steve Will? Steve Will. Uh, he was Man on the repping, shirt. Repping some ATT gear in Tokyo. Uh, Tokyo. So, so he was, uh, that was awesome. We love seeing that our merch. Good, Internationally. Yeah. Yeah. That's an easy way to get some, uh, get some. 
if all of a sudden we get a huge spike in Japan on listeners, it's, it's yeah, all because we, of you. we appreciate that when you're packing your bags to go somewhere, you think about our shirt and our show <laughs> and that you put, you, you only have limited space in your suitcase. And part of that space is for us. <laughs> there, there he is. Let me pull, let me, let me pull him up here. Uh, this guy right here. Dope. Look at that. Yeah, that's a nice yeah, cut. That's a nice cut. Shirt, too. I like too. that one. Yeah, that's a good shirt. That's uh, I believe that's a blast off tee. You know what? That might not be on the store right now, but in honor of I'm Steve Bill, if it's right not, now, yeah. I'm throwing that one back on the store today. Oh, make sure it's on there. Awesome. Ari, yeah, and if not, Steve, arigato, Mr. Steve. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Steve Willio. <laughs> if you're not supporting the show by now, you know where to go alientheorist.com hit the support tab join us on patreon or supercast get the episodes early ad free all the bonus stuff we fucking appreciate it this week's new supporters a whopping two brand new babies tonight this week rick bus and tom gregory thank you very much for supporting for the too. show yeah. those two you're you're really you're keeping the lights on because well we're all going to be on the danish diet now yeah, we're all going <laughs> to be on the danish diet here <laughs> Um, little thin on the Patreon supporters. That's okay. You know, it happens. Go through, go through summer, man. People summer. spending their money. People are busy. Got tons yeah. of stuff for you, though. So go check it out. Um, easy way to get a shirt. If you want a shirt, $25 tier, $50 tier, uh, get yourself a shirt. Uh, you don't have to worry about paying the shipping. If you're over in UK or uh, somewhere else or the shipping, uh, might be astronomical. We take care of that for it's you. It's on us. It's on us. It's on us. Sign up. You get access to our Discord, uh, all our bonus content, including D and D, um, which one of the funniest New ones one coming out is going to be f- fucking hilarious. It's going to be a banger. Uh, it was fun to record. Um, Speaking of the UK, yeah, yeah, Lord Pan- Pantagan, P- Pantagandis. Pantagandis. Pantagandis, Lord Pantagandis oh. makes an appearance. No spoilers, boys. Spoilers. That's it. Come on, That's all you get. spoilers. That's all you get. Uh, and uh, you know, help the show out. If you like the show, uh, show us some love. You know where to do it. And as we always say at the end of these things, keep those eyes on the skies. I am fucking soaked. Oh, me too, man. Um, I'm sliding down this chair. It's disgusting. It's fucking gross, boys. Is dwarf a bad word now? Yes, that's why they changed it in the Snow White movie. <clears throat> yeah, but dwarfs are so cool. Snow White and the Seven Magical Beings. No, or it's just like that Snow White it. and the Magical Beings. Oh, oh that is not even seven of them now. Yeah. Okay. What's wrong with dwarves? I Thank guess you. it's I guess it's offensive. I guess it's derogatory no. But we're talking my like, thing a is, myth, like a mythical dwar- like a fantasy dwarf. Yeah, like the not? like the Snow White dwarf. Or a, they're not doing Lord Snow White and the dwarf. Seven Dwarves. They're just doing it's Snow White and the you magical. Can, you can still use magical, dwarf when it's referring to the magical creature, but I guess they're white, not doing dwarves.